Hey there and welcome back. This is the introduction to one of our most requested series about using payload CMS in combination with Next.js. So here's what we're going to talk about during the next videos. First of all, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how you can make those two things work together with different scenarios there can be where it makes sense to use those two. After that, we're going to learn how you can build dynamic pages in payload and use them to create a dynamic website in the Next.js frontend. We're also going to learn how you can auto-generate pages from a collection. For example, if you want to create a page for every blog article that you create in payload. After that, we're going to talk about global components and their global data, which means components that appear throughout the website, like a header or a footer. After that, we will be talking about how you can keep the backend synchronized with the front end so that if you make changes, they immediately appear on the front end. Also, we are going to implement live preview so that you can actually see how the information that you just put into payload will look like in the front end. And last but not least, we will be talking about SEO and how you can optimize the performance of your Next.js site. So in which cases does it actually make sense to use payload CMS in combination with Next.js? The most popular one would be if you need to build a website. There it definitely makes sense to not only use payload, but also use Next.js. The second scenario could be that you have to build an internal management tool, like a CRM or a support ticket management tool, anything like that, which is more internal. So in this case, we mostly use payload standalone and add our own React components into Payload's admin panel. And the last case could be that you want to build your own SaaS product. So in this case, since you probably want to use your own you know, login pages, your own layouts, your own designs, it probably makes sense to also have a separate front end that just uses Payload as an API in a backend. For the ongoing videos, we are going to focus mainly on building a website, since this is the most popular use case. So now we're going to talk about the code structure. So what we like to do is actually have two repositories, one for a backend, which means payload, and one for the front end, which means Next.js. Both of them will be the boilerplate default set up projects that you can easily generate with just a few commands. So the backend will be hosted on a server. You can use whatever you want. We will be using Rayway, but you can also use AWS LightSail, whatever you want. In the end, this server will cost us around $4 to $10 per month, depending on how complex your project will get and obviously how much editing traffic you will have, which means how much people are actually actively working on that page, which means adding blog articles, etc. So what won't be an issue here is if your actual website front end has a lot of visitors, because that will be handled with Vercel. And Vercel doesn't care about the traffic or rather it has very generous traffic limits and you won't have to scale your backend server too much. So additional services that we need are object storage, which is free for the first five gigabytes on AWS, and the database, uh, which we will use MongoDB Atlas for, which also has a great free plan. And we will use Brevo as an email provider, which allows us to send up to 300 emails per day for free. And the front end will be hosted on Vercel, as I've already said. And that gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of benefits. The first one would be that your website will be cached on a global content delivery network, which means, which means that 
no matter where you are in the world, you will always have great loading times. Also, um, Vercel has an integrated DDoS protection, so you don't have to worry about any attacks on your website. And as I've already mentioned, it has very generous traffic limits. Also, we can use the Vercel image optimization, which works pretty well together with Next.js. You basically don't have to do anything. And this will even uh, this will this will even speed up your image loading process more because Vercel will actually cache your optimized images on the edge and will deliver them pretty pretty rapidly. So a question that we get very often is is payload something like WordPress because they hear the word content management system and I mean WordPress is a content management system as well, right? So the main difference between payload and things like WordPress is that payload is a headless CMS, which means it doesn't generate any website on its own. There's no visible website if you just use payload. What payload is, is basically a hub for your data where you can create collections and store your data. So what you actually do as a developer in the code is you define the collections that your system wants to store, okay? So for example, pages or blog articles or team members, whatever really. And the admin panel is then used to actually fill in the data. So for example, create a blog article. What payload doesn't provide is a drag and drop editor. So there is no real visual building for a front end. That's what we do in Next.js. So in order to build a website, we will have to create templates, which means we have to build specific blocks in Next.js that use placeholder values that are then later filled in with the actual data from the CMS. So how it works is after you've created all the templates, for example, like a template page for a blog article, okay? At build time, Next.js is going to get all the data from payload, all the blog articles, and for every blog article, it will go through the template and fill in the values and generate a static page with that. That's how you go from adding the data to a visible front end. Now, a few important notes before we get into the practical details. In this tutorial, we will be using the old pages router. Um, we are planning to create a series about the new app router as well, but we felt like since we have been using the pages router up until this point, and a lot of people are familiar with it, we wanted to use this in our tutorial as well to have both in an optimal case at some point. Also, you can definitely combine both repositories, backend and frontend, into one. However, we like separating them because, first of all, we get to use Vercel's amazing platform and features. And also, in most of our projects, payload, so in this case, the CMS backend, doesn't only act as a CMS, but also has more functionalities added to it like for example, a CRM backend, or we also have an app backend, which might power a native app at some point. So in this case, it makes sense to separate the backend server from the frontend website. Now, there are specific plugins and, and packages and templates that you can use to actually combine payload into a next project. The most popular one would be next payload. So we wouldn't actually recommend doing that uh, and rather wait for payload version three, which will be native Next.js. Because yeah, in theory, this does enable you to put the entire project on Vercel and host it for free. However, in our experience, it has caused many issues and incompatibilities, and it was really hard to get simpler things working. Also, you will have to be aware that if you host 
your project on Vercel, you will have cold starts of the serverless functions. So it's not like there is a server running at all times, but basically as soon as you want to um, access the admin panel, it will request it to Vercel and Vercel will basically spin up a mini server real, real quick and execute this serverless function, which just takes a couple of seconds. So apart from that, let's get into the practical details and see you in the next video.